The first round of the tournament is in the books, so it's time to wake, wake up, up, college basketball! Welcome to Wake Up College Basketball, presented by Four Points Hotels. Travel reinvented. Book now, Ryan, at fourpoints.com. I got it all there. I got Dan, it all there. Dan, I, I hate to sort of dig into your past. Oh, no. Already? Um, I seem to remember that you had a particular view on the first round and how it was going to progress. It was probably perfectly correct. In regards to upsets. Do we have this footage oh, that God. we can... There has been a lot of talk mm -hmm. about, is this tournament as exciting as years past? Yeah. Uh -huh. So th those are your words. And how did that how did that turn out for you? I felt like in spirit I was uh -huh. correct. Uh -huh. In spirit I was correct. Maybe what you were saying is that so many teams are underseeded that they're not yes, true upsets. They're not true upsets. We didn't give Stephen F. Austin their fair due. This right? is true. Middle Tennessee, yeah. a power. Yeah, they should have been a five seed. So. so we have now concluded the first round with mm -hmm. the most double digit wins, double digit seed yeah. wins of the tournament. Uh, it has been exciting. It yes. has been unexpected. It had some heartbreak. Yes. It's had some questionable decision making. Fair. Yeah. Uh, this is what I will, will posit to you. Mm -hmm. Who now, with all of these upsets, now Michigan State is out. Yep. Um, we have West Virginia gone. The yep. press Virginia is out. Stephen F. Austin comes through in Brooklyn. Texas is out. Texas is gone. Who now has a significantly easier road in your mind? Uh, I think Utah looks like they have yeah. a pretty easy immediate future. Well, maybe not immediate future. That right. Gonzaga game uh, is going to be yes. a good test for them. It is literally big. <laughs> yeah, it, it is literally big. But after that, they have, uh, I believe, they, they will play the winner. If they get past them, right. play the winner of the Syracuse. Um, Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee yeah, game. 10 and 15 seed. So, so it, you do feel like, okay, Utah can start to build up some momentum mm -hmm. here. Uh, another team that maybe has a little room to breathe now, Xavier. Uh, right. They, they have will, a, a relatively tough Wisconsin, yes, but yeah, yes. continue. Yeah. A Wisconsin team that is happy to just play you at the slowest pace. Possible. Yes. Um, was, but the nice thing for Xavier is you can't really just shut down one of, you know, it's not just like, okay, that's their number one player, go right. shut him down. They have four or five guys that can score for them. Mm -hmm. uh, please don't play Wisconsin's game, Xavier, because <laughs> I really want to stay awake and enjoy. They are two deliberate teams, though. They, are, yeah, they do they play are, very deliberately. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Who else, who else stands out to so you? So Texas A&M yeah. also, even with Oklahoma mm -hmm. on their side of the region, Texas A&M's journey now that uh, Northern Iowa, who did need a last-second halftime miracle shot mm -hmm. to beat Texas, and Northern Iowa is good. Right. I just don't think they're as complete a team, perhaps, as they've been or that needs to be in place to beat a team like Texas A&M at this point. Right. And as good as Washburn and Jesperson are, they are dangerous. Mm -hmm. it, it is potentially an easier road, I think, for Texas A&M not getting Texas, which would have been so much fun. I assume if you and I beats Texas and Texas A&M, right. they just get to be kings of the Lone Star. Like, they can just they are the Texas new Big 12 champs. Uh -huh. Yes, that's, right, what, that's right. what happens. One true champion Yeah. Big 12. So, and then Michigan State going down, obviously. Wow. We talked about Middle Tennessee moving yeah. forward. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! That, um, yeah, I don't know what to say about it. It, <laughs> right. it was... It was in a day where we also had Hawaii beating Cal. We had mm -hmm. we had pretty much everything you wanted in terms of upsets that were sort of dragged out. Like, right. oh, can they hold on to do this? We had buzzer beaters. We had buzzer beaters that didn't count in right. that Cincinnati game. Mm -hmm. It was just a buffet of excitement <laughs> and anxiety. And there are a lot of teams that are probably waking up this morning like, what happened? You saw the clip of Indiana players finding out about yeah, Michigan State. Yeah, like, oh! Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They did not seem particularly sympathetic. No, they did not. Yeah. And I'm sure Virginia is, uh, speaking of easier path, maybe yeah. feeling the same way. All right, let's go to a human story, you a want, human let's level. Let's talk fashion. Let's talk this fashion. This is a morning show. There's no reason we can't talk so about fashion. So you may have noticed yeah. that Ryan and I are each wearing white shirts. Mm -hmm. Normally wear, you know, some sort of pattern yep. or plaid or something yep. like that. Something sports bro-y. Yeah. Yes. Sean Miller. Arizona's head coach, uh -huh. they go out to Wichita State Thursday evening. Yeah. Um, he got warm. Let's take a look at the photo. This is a this. photo. That's... So as you can see, it got toasty mm. in his core, in this in region. In his core? Yeah. It, does your core contain your whole body now? No, it's just like the Earth's core oh, <laughs> is what I was I referencing. See. He, was, he was leaking magma. So let's give him and anybody else, because we are two sweaty gentlemen, just mm -hmm. normally speaking, Yeah. Uh, just one little snippet of just, advice. Just a few fashion tips. Yeah, look One at of that. These. 
One Look of these. That. Just undershirt. an undershirt. Undershirt. That's it absorbs. Calf. Absolutely. Yes. But let's talk about, you know, other coaches have to deal with this in the basketball Fair. world. Let's sort of go through some of your options. Okay. We're gonna start Hit me. with we're gonna start with Bruce Pearl. Classic. Infamously sweaty. Mm -hmm. And you can sort of see, uh, I don't know if you can see there's some sweat standing yes. right there, a little up here by the neck. Yeah. But you know what he's doing, Dan? He's keeping that jacket on. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, underneath here, it's like Lake Superior in the back. <laughs> but you don't know that because the jacket stays on. The jacket always stays on. Yes. It shields the world from your true it is, shape. It is a sweat coverall. Um, then we've got, of course, John Thompson. Love this strategy. This is, I mean, this is just honest. You're at basketball. Mm -hmm. There are towels literally everywhere. Yep. Just take one, mop up a little He's bit. He's taking control. There's nothing wrong with that. I would actually like to see some sort of like tie that is also a chamois, right. so that you can just sort of flip the tie up. See, I wipe up. In my perfect world, yeah. Sean Miller would have sometimes when football teams go to really humid climates, right. they have like irrigation I cooling see. systems. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's what Sean Miller, if he really wants to go for and it. And then absolutely worst. I mean, look at look at Bob Huggins. Story. Yeah. Bob, Steers right into there's it. There's nothing about Bob Huggins that suggests this man has ever been cold a day <laughs> in his life. But he just wears he just wears like the golf windbreaker. Mm -hmm. Because there's no rule that says, yeah, you have to wear a white dress shirt. Breathable on the sideline. fabrics. Absolutely. He's he might be fully nude under that, for all we know. <laughs> that is not something I wanted to think about this well, early in the good morning. Good morning, yeah. So, good so morning. just a few fashion tips from us to you. Please, Sean Miller, I don't ever want to wonder what your torso looks like again. No, no. And with that, we are now going to check in with our friend Seth Rosenthal, who is, for the entire NCAA tournament, holed up in a four points Sheraton and really living the dream. Let's check in. You know, this March Madness, it's all about the one seeds. Everyone said this is the year the 16 could do it. I said, no way. Kansas made it out of the first round. Not a lot of people saw that coming. I'm proud of you, Bill Self. You did it. Holy Cross, more like, holy cross them off my bracket. Virginia won, and that sound you hear, that's everybody jumping off the Hampton bandwagon. UNC versus Dunk City, well we know how that went. Dunk City, more like <laughs> Fart City. Not a lot of people are as enlightened as me. You're not gonna see people with brackets this perfect. But that's because people aren't living in a basketball sanctuary. I'm just living and breathing basketball and making perfect picks. All right, well, man. He, he's getting a little weird. A little bit strange. Like, that's Seth. He's kind of a weird, uh, in like a good way. He's a weird dude. And it's it's been in a very intense first yeah, round. Yeah, it's uh, the, the first round is very long. It's yes. taxing. I, I think I think he'll be fine. He'll mm -hmm. have a couple days to sort of work it out. Everybody deals system. with all those upsets in their own way. Yeah, he's good. He's good. All right, and finally, we we've given advice to Sean Miller. Now it's time to give advice to just a wide range of people Boy, right now. So as a result of all these upsets, we have a lot of large fan bases that yes. have less reason to watch the tournament than they would otherwise. True. And we get that. Like I, we're not here to tell you what to do. In fact, we want to make your lives easier. So mm -hmm. we've come up with what I think is a pretty good list of alternative television that you can watch Ooh. while the tournament is on. We're gonna start on Saturday. Yes. We'll get, we're getting you kicked off with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Okay, the original, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, you'll relate to that because it's a movie about getting that perfect golden ticket and then you end up dead before you get to yeah, the end. Yeah, not making it to the you end. You end up drowning in a river of chocolate or something. <laughs> uh, then we go over to Friends, that's on TBS. Classic. So you can pretend like, oh, I was totally trying to watch the basketball game, I assumed it was on TBS, and instead I'm watching Gunther uh, Lust After Rachel. Mm -hmm. So you got that going. And then from 5 to 11, you're going to watch Alaska State Troopers. I don't know. I've never watched All it. Right. I have no idea if it's good or not. There's definitely not going to be it's basketball. definitely not basketball. <laughs> uh, Sunday. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're good TV out day. With seven hours of flip or flop on HGTV. Uh. Because, because. See, but that know, could be interpreted as Duke. It could. You see what I did? It could. Yes. But it's all about it's all about reclamation projects. It's True. About rebuilding. Building up. It's gonna, gonna kind of get you into the mindset of already building too much confidence for next year, mm. for when your team also loses. Too okay. Early. Uh, and then we end you with Kindergarten Cop, just uh, a heartwarming classic. A romp. About children who are too young to play college basketball. What? What cops, more do you need? And also cops. I love it. All right. We have given everybody everything they need mm -hmm. from a college basketball. We've solved all world problems. You're welcome. It feels good. It yeah, feels it right. Does. So with that, thank you for watching Wake Up College Basketball presented by Four Points Hotels. Travel reinvented. Book now at fourpoints.com. We'll see you soon.